Hi, my name is Robin Bremer, and uh, you're watching Supernatural God Talks. Um, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit because in order for anybody to walk in the supernatural presence and power of God, you're going to have to, uh, you do it all by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, teaching about the uh, supernatural power of God in you, which is the Holy Spirit. But before I do, I want you to realize something. God does not create junk. You are not junk. Okay, God does not create a nobody and no accidents. Every single person that is on this earth is on this earth by design, by purpose. Everybody has a purpose and a mission to accomplish that only that person can do. And God even says that He picks and 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 uh, He picks the time that you're going to be born. You weren't born in 12 A.D. You weren't born in 1400s. You weren't born in 2025. You were born the year you were born and the century you were born for a purpose and a reason. And if you're watching this videotape right now, you were born and created for end times. And the people of end times have um, double what the pe people had in the when Jesus first came to the earth. Uh, he's given us the former and the latter reign together because we need... Uh, power, authority, and dominion to convince this world that there's a real God out there who who's, loves His people, who does signs, wonders, and miracles through His children. We're created in His image. So you are created in God's image, and you are created for a special purpose and a special mission that only you can do. So let's get started uh, studying the scriptures. Let's get started. First of all, I want you to realize that Romans 5, 8 says, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's because he loves us so much. And you've got to realize that those people that are, are, are out there that are doing things that are not pleasing to God, those people that are out there that are sinning, those people that are out there making all kinds of mistakes, Jesus died for sinners. We were all sinners. And when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, when we receive the free gift of Jesus' blood, paying the price for our sins, His death paying the price for our sins, we become God's kids. We become born again. That means that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. And while we're on earth, um, Jesus died, not just so that we could go to heaven when we died, so that we could be filled and, and empowered by His Holy Spirit, that we could be healthy and healed, that we could be uh, prosperous and to do the work of the kingdom, that we would not live in fear, that we could heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, preach the gospel to the poor. Uh, all those things, he wants us to have wisdom, power, strength, because we're created in his image. He bought back and paid for us everything that the devil stole from Adam and Eve in the garden uh, and has been ruling this world with until the time Jesus died and rose again from the dead and sent back the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. All those things that were stolen from us are now restored back to us. Through the kingdom of God, we got to enforce it and take what's ours. Um, but if you're just, if you're a person who's just going to church, and all you're doing is you're going to church because you uh, want to do the right thing, you want to be a good person, you're going to church, uh, whether it's a Catholic church and you're going through all the rituals and everything, or whether you're just going to church, a Methodist church, a Lutheran, whatever, you're just going to church because you think it's the right thing to do. That's a good start. But we don't get to heaven by being good or earning it or going to church. We get to heaven by accepting the free gift of Jesus. And uh, that's what we need to do, is to accept that free gift. And I'll go over that later on. But right now, let's go over. the. If you're just going to church and you're tired of the dead, dry religion... You go to church, you do these rituals, but then you leave church, you go out and you have sex, you go out and you smoke, you drink, you party, you swear. You just live like everybody else in the world. You have no victory in your life, no power in your life, no peace or joy in your life. Uh, church is just a dry, dead, religious thing that you do because your parents make you go to church or because you think it's the right thing to do. Well, I got news for you. That's all going to change. Um, as you listen to my broadcast, you're going to find out that God is a God of power, peace, and joy. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have a party, but His party. Have you ever heard of getting high on the Holy Spirit or being drunk in the Holy Spirit? It's an awesome thing. Have you ever heard that angels still work today for us? Angels are still manifested in the world today. People are still uh, 
transported and translated just like uh, uh, Paul was and other people were who um, um, I don't remember the story the I think it was so, I don't remember who it was I'll go over it later but things that happened in the Bible days are still happening today God is a good God he's a fun God he's all about us and all about joy and peace and righteousness he he doesn't want you feeling guilty or ashamed or embarrassed once you accept Jesus in your heart and you're born again he does not want you to feel guilty ashamed embarrassed or inadequate you are no longer a sinner but you were a sinner now you are a new creation created in God's image and that is so exciting because God is all about you walking in power and walking in peace and joy he wants you to laugh and have a good time if it wasn't for sin on this earth God wouldn't have a care in the world God is an awesome God so let's start by going over some of the scriptures here um, if you're in a dry dead religion you need the Holy Spirit and let me show you why by the scripture everything has to be tested by the scripture okay first of all love you cannot really love if you don't have the Holy Spirit Romans 5 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit and remember faith works by love okay so if you don't have God's love you you don't have faith to do the things without faith it's impossible to please God the key to walking in love is having the Holy Spirit also uh, in um, Jude 20 21 it says but you beloved Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit and keeping yourself in the love of God. So when you pray in the Holy Spirit or tongues, which is power for the believer today, when you pray in that special language, and we'll go over that later on or in another video clip, you're building yourself up in love and perfect love casts out fear. So number one reason that I have on my list that you need the Holy Spirit is love. You have to have the Holy Spirit to walk in love. Number two, He guides us in all truth. If you're in a dead, dry religion that teaches you that God is out to get you and out to punish you, that God puts sickness and disease on you to teach you a lesson, to humble you, to get glory, or uh, because He wants to, then you're in a dry, dead religion. You're not having a personal relationship with Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit. He guides us in all truths. How do you know if what you're being taught is the truth if you don't have the truth giver, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit reveals God's will. And the Holy Spirit, uh, you're led by the Holy Spirit, which is Romans 8, 14. And the Holy Spirit is God's voice. Okay? And also, we obey the truth through the Holy Spirit. How can you discover a truth and follow it if you don't have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's 1 Peter 2, well, 1, 22. Now this is very, very important. If you ever thought, I can't get saved now, I'm too much, I, I sin too much, I, I just keep sinning, I can't get it right. Well, you don't have to get it right. All you have to do is get Jesus and the Holy Spirit right here. Romans 8, 13 and Galatians 5, 24 and 25 says that we crucify the flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, when Jesus calls you to you, He accepts you just the way you are. Now, the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you will be in His image, the more you'll want to please Him. You don't, it's not that we want you to follow rules. God doesn't want you to follow rules. Do this, 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 this. The rules and the law are the Old Testament. Jesus came and He gives us grace. He gives things to us before we obey and then we're so in love with him we want to obey okay we crucify our flesh by the Holy Spirit so once you accept Jesus the gift of Jesus ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life according to Romans 10 uh, 9 confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord believe in your heart God raised him from the dead you will be saved once you do those things then you qualify for asking the Holy Spirit to live in you because Jesus is really sitting at the right hand of God in heaven he sprinkled his blood on the mercy seats blood always covers sins it takes away sins Jesus blood took away all of our sins when we receive that gift and confess with our mouth um, he took away all of our sins so now he sent back the Holy Spirit to live in us to empower us to be like him